Electricity is the very blood that flows through the veins of Royal Naval warships. Modern warships need properly trained engineers to maintain their sophisticated electrical and weapon systems. Electric power was first introduced into British warships a century ago, and it was Royal Naval engineers such as this one who first made use of the revolutionary but crude electrical equipment of that time. In today's Navy, developments such as the micro-circuit make it essential that modern electrical engineers are trained to standards undreamed of by their Victorian predecessors. Here at HMS Collingwood, young electrical trainees start by making use of modern teaching methods familiarizing themselves with basic electrical circuitry. These young men are trainee electrical mechanics, attending Collingwood on an intensive 26-week course. The face of the oscilloscope can be divided into four quarters. In the top left-hand corner is the screen. Collingwood also runs apprenticeship courses for electrical artificers, and during this five-year training course, an apprentice's skill of hand is allowed to flourish. There are three distinct types of trainee mechanics and apprentices at Collingwood. Radio, those who deal with aspects such as radio and radar. Ordnance, maintaining, for example, the heavy motors on weapon systems. And control meaning, among other things, keeping check on electrical circuits of an advanced gyro compass. Whether he specializes in radio ordnance or control, Collingwood provides facilities and training schemes which allow each rating to exercise his particular abilities to the full. During an intensive six-week course, young radio electrical artificer apprentices actually build an oscilloscope from scratch. A thought-provoking and demanding task by any standards. So it's not surprising that during their first year in the Royal Navy, apprentices can take part one of the ordinary national certificate, completing part two in the second year of training at Collingwood. Having built his own oscilloscope, the radio apprentice goes on to an even more demanding task. By making use of the now familiar oscilloscope, the apprentice, here aided by a radio mechanic, carries out a difficult fault-finding exercise on sophisticated radar equipment. This control apprentice is carrying out a maintenance job on the ship's internal radio, a part of the ship's electrical equipment which must be kept running, as must all electrical equipment and weapon systems aboard the modern warship.
theory and practice are two aspects of electrical training that go hand in glove at Collingwood. In this transmitter room where trainee radio mechanics tackle the impressive type 640 radio sets, ferreting out hidden electronic faults, others undergo a tough theoretical examination. Once the examination paper has been completed, each candidate can take it directly to the examiner for marking. In this way, trainee mechanics are seen to cover a wide field of electrical theory during their 26 weeks or so at Collingwood. Again, theory into practice. Here, the radio apprentice and mechanic check out the radar, which is part of the SeaCat anti-aircraft missile system. On the SeaCat missile system, the control apprentice and mechanic share the task of checking out the director and the control system of the launcher. Now the ordnance artificer and mechanic take over. It's their job to ensure that the missile mounting reacts accurately to the controls fed into it. The sea slug, yet another of the Navy's modern weapons to receive expert attention from Collingwood's young electrical trainees. With opportunities like this open to them, HMS Collingwood's young electrical artificer apprentices and electrical mechanics can indeed look forward to an interesting and worthwhile career in today's Navy.